the everybody's pumped up. All eyes are on turn number four. Looking the field over. There's nothing like it. The wheel and modified tour goes green and down into turn number one. Around the outside, Craig Lutz from the pole position looking to lead off turn two. The challenge for second. Justin Bonsignor in a white number 51 here this year. Sails it in on the top of Austin Beers in turn three. It is Bonsignor who's trying to create a little magic in the outside lane. Who's right there with him? Here comes Ryan Priest. Priest runs to the top side of the racetrack. They're making it a four-car bid for five positions. It is the number 16, defending champion of the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour. Back up front, here's a bid for the lead. Ron Silk and the magic that he has with Phil Moran is unbelievable. Look at this move. Silk just put the car to the bottom. Once his car might be losing some of its magic because we have, for the very first time, a different leader, and it is car number 16, Roddy Soap, defending champion of the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour. Bottom of the racetrack, we've got a car off the pace, but we are still under green, and it is Lutz. Now about a car length and a half back on Ron Silk, the leader. Here comes Andrew Krause, closes right back into the back bumper of Ron Silk once again, looks to the bottom, off turn number two, puts the wheel to the inside lane. Here comes Andrew Krause to the bottom of turn three. He'll take over the race lead over the defending champion. He makes it look so easy. The oval speed sponsored car now takes over the lead. This is another lead change in this event. And once Krause gets into the lead, he starts to string it out even more at this particular point in the event. And Kyle Bonsignor of that pack. Oh, trouble. Tommy quarters of the way down. Tommy Catalano got into the back of the 18 of Ken Hagee. Ken Hagee was trying to turn into his stall. Anthony Cecily has missed his pit stall, and he is trying to back up to his crew. That's a gap that would get you to the garage. And matter of fact, he's just trying to leave pit lane and had gotten in that tangle as well. So Cecily is able to get rolling once again. Up front, though, the attack is on. Justin Bonson, you are putting heat on Ronnie Silk into turn one. They are nose to tail as they hit the making of turns one and two. Bonson, you are carved down to the bottom of the back straightaway. There's no question. They continue to run tight and fierce. Meanwhile, trying to get off the racetrack is Anthony Cecily in the bottom of turn number four. Cecily's car has come to a stop at the entrance of pit row, caution number four now is into the record books. Caution four of the night, and it comes on lap 147. Anthony Cecily had been limping around the racetrack for about two laps here, 39 laps to go. Watch out, because Silk has been able to literally stand on the throttle and pull away on every previous restart. This one will be no exception to that rule. Meanwhile... Here comes Lutz to the inside. Hirschman on the outside for the third position. They come together. Down into turns one and two and off four. Back to the line they come. Hirschman got out of shape that time. Off turn four. He'll give up two spots as both Lutz. Trouble. We've got another and caution. And Toby gets through. And the trouble this time for J.B. Port in off turn four. He's able to get that car back down pit road. But... Uh, right side damage, right front tire is down, right rear is damaged as well. You see the nerf bar is rubbed up against the outside concrete, and J.B. Fortin's going to have a long drive home tonight back to Long Island uh, with a damaged race car, not the result he wanted. The restart here once again at New Suburban Speedway, working our way toward the finish, and this crowd is certainly in for what is going to be an outstanding battle to the end of this one. Here they come off turn four. Bonsignor a little bit better that time of the restart, but as we predicted, Doug Covey will push Ron Silk through in the outside lane. So Silk goes to the lead, oh. but Bonsignor into the back of Ronnie Silk and Doug Covey goes backwards. Here comes Craig Lutz. Craig Lutz moves into the third spot. Side by side battle behind him. Matt Hirschman becomes the guy who now shifts back to the bottom. Krauss is running directly between, behind the Hirschman machine. Doug Colby isn't done yet. Here comes Krauss. Clean Nobody. those tires off one more time. Get ready to fire them off. The final shootout. Ten to go at New Smyrna Speedway. Kobe on the outside lane to the bottom of the young. Austin Beers, and he will keep even with Doug Kobe down into turn one. No question about it. Beers got the lead, drifts up the racetrack a bit. That puts Ronnie Silk back up to second. 
Leader of the pack is Austin Beers out in front. Doug Kobe setting back in the third spot. Austin Beers at the beginning of last year knew he had to be more aggressive. He was there, but another guy who's aggressive is Ron Silk. Right to the bottom in turn two. Silk out in front, trying to go back to back with wins in New Smyrna. Ronnie Silk takes back the lead. Austin Beers still digging in. Trouble now. Little contact was made. Everybody is okay. Meanwhile, it is Lutz who's also contending with Doug Colby. They're in a battle of side-by-side competition here. Leaders in turn three and four to be the white flag this time by Ronnie Silk across the line. He looks in the rearview mirror, five car lengths behind. Justin Bonsignor is there. It's not over with yet. There's two turns left in the competition. Will Silk pick up where he left off with a victory in the start of his quest just one year ago here at New Smyrna. Ronnie Silk has done it. He will take down the win in the opener for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour.